Robots are increasingly used to take over repetitive tasks in industry and agriculture. But humans still need to work alongside them, and often things can go badly wrong. 13,000 injuries and 60 deaths were caused by accidents due to contact with machinery between 2014 and 18 in the UK alone. Engineers are always working on ways to make robots safer, cheaper and more efficient. I am Ankita Nurban, and I spoke to Matthias Althoff from the Technical University of Munich in Germany about his recent work on modular robots. Modular robots can be easily taken apart and reconfigured, a bit like Lego. But why are these useful? Every time you have a different task, you can reassemble the robot such that it optimally fits this new task. So if you have a standard robot, it might not be able to fulfill this new task anymore, and then you have to purchase a new robot. So that's one of the big advantages of modular robots. They have been around for a while. The difficulty, however, is if you um, assemble the robot again, then you basically have to reprogram the robot because it has a different shape. So you have to tell the robot, now you have to move this joint differently in order to reach a certain object. That requires a lot of effort. So then people often have bought a different new robot that can fulfill this new task. And so what does your work do in this context? We have built a modular robot that if it is reconnected, it reprograms certain tasks by itself. So you do not have to tell the robot anymore what shape it has, what the different dynamics is it has now. It will just reprogram all the controllers such that if you tell the robot, okay, grab this object and then move it to another position, it will do this automatically without having to be reprogrammed by a programmer. And what kind of applications are these robots used for? The options are very numerous. There's endless possibilities. I mean, the advantage is that you can, first of all, build a robot that exactly fits your needs. That's one thing. And the other thing is if a part is broken, you can just replace that part and just put in a different module. So today in the automotive industry, if a robot breaks down, then they have to completely replace this robot. And the other thing is that with very few modules, you can combine so many different robots that you can mass produce these modules and that can make robots cheaper, especially robots for special purposes. Okay, so it sounds like this is a way to make robotics cheaper and more efficient. How about the people working with the robots? What's new there? In a conventional robot, of course, a conventional robot has to be caged. And our robot doesn't have to be caged anymore. That means that there is a physical cage around the robot, so you cannot approach the robot. Because, of course, you can put your arm close to the robot and it might be cramped. Or you could be really seriously hit by a robot because they have a lot of force. And every year there are people who have very serious injuries or even people can die because the robot is moving and it's not stopped inside the cage when the cage is open. And of course, if you want to have this flexible robot, you want to kind of approach it, change it, and also ideally work closely together with the robot. And that's why we are kind of kind of tracking the pose of the human body. And depending on the pose, we're computing where the human could reach next. And if the robot could reach the robot, then we will slow down the robot or even stop it. But only when this is really imminent. So the robot still works very naturally with the human. And the human gets a lot of confidence in working with the robot because it will always stop before it is touched. Right. So the robot basically has some sort of sensors to know when a human is nearby. Right. So there are cameras or other sensors um, to detect where the human is. And depending on the pose of the human, the robot knows how to move. That sounds like it's going to be very useful for a lot of different industries. When do you expect these robots to become commercially viable? A group of students in my lab uh, planning a startup company. And we already have a website called um, www.modularrobotics.de. And we are planning to uh, launch the first product in 2020. Are there different parts that people would buy and put them together? Yes, basically, like if you go in a clothing store, so we have an S, an M, an L, and an XL module right now. You have a lot of different link modules that you can put together and just uh, let your creativity flow and there are no limits. I mean, you can build any kind of robot you want. It's kind of this Lego effect that you really um, want to build then the next robot because it's really easy to to just change the shape of the robot and make it behave completely differently. That was Matthias Alter from the Technical University of Munich talking about his paper in Science Robotics, 